Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we're going to be going over the statement of work or SOW and as you can see here on screen I have a template uh, prepared to go over with you so what I wanted to do here is that I wanted to go over the critical components of a statement of work. Um, this may work differently at the organization that you work at um, you may be using some templates at your organization um, or some Word documentation. But what I wanted to do here is just give you a, a pulse of what the document entails and to give you a better understanding as to how this type of document can be completed. So first of all, normally you're going to have your overview section here on the statement of work. Um, here you have that and basically in this section you're gonna have some of the components that include a statement of how the vendor agrees to deliver milestones to the organization so here you have to define your acceptance criteria as to when in our case the software package that's being built how will the PMO tools Inc deliver their software um, are they going to deploy it to a certain environment where the users have access to it? All of these particular items have to be defined here. Um, it, it does sound pretty obvious sometimes where the assumption is, okay, the vendor is going to know what to do in regards to deploying the software in this case. And, you know, they have everything uh, locked down to do that but you really have to investigate this and make sure it's to your satisfaction and understand that you're the one who's in charge um, in regards to this vendor contract because it's your group and your stakeholders are the ones that have to report to executive management if things don't turn out correctly. So it's up to you to really make sure that this is specified to your satisfaction among other items here at the SOW also. Um, next point here is the definition of the specific scope. And what you want to consider here is not just the development scope, but um, how will this vendor also provide support? Because here you have support work as well as train the trainer work. Um, they develop the software in our case, but how will they train our super users because eventually we do want to let go of this vendor and we don't want to be in a position where you know in our organization we don't have people who can train others on this particular software package and another thing to consider outside of this is um, what will be the train the trainer process within your organization because what happens is is that you may have a super user but they may leave the organization. So what happens then? So you definitely need to have a plan for that. Um, and here again, you wanna carefully detail out the work that's gonna be done here. Um, a lot of this seems obvious, uh, you know, again, thinking that the vendor has your best interests in hand, but a lot of times this is not always the case and you really have to make sure that this is detailed out. And one of the ways that you do this is that you have to work on this SOW with your project team and your executive stakeholders. Make sure especially the executive stakeholders are on board with this particular SOW or if you're working with a procurement group in your organization, uh, just make sure that you uh, stay to their standards uh, in regards to vendor contracts. And another thing here you want to make sure, make sure the change control process is defined. Uh, sometimes in projects, you're going to have changes. So if there are changes to scope, changes to schedule, how will that work out with the vendor? Are they going to be extra charges to the project, extra costs? Um, what is their process for change control? So you want to know that. Um, another thing is that you want to make sure that the project duration dates are defined um, and, and you also want to confirm from the vendor side if they have the resources necessary to do this project in this timeline. Um, a lot of times with vendors, they do a sales uh, um, 
uh, not a tactic, but it's like they present a very nice presentation during the sales process, but they haven't really considered um, what goes on, on on the back end because you know they're they're very eager to get your money up front. So you just want to make sure that they really understand the timeline and that they understand that resources have to be available at specific times. And that leads to this here, what are the termination terms? Um, what would be, I mean, if you're completely dissatisfied with this vendor, there has to be some sort of clause where you can terminate the contract um, with very limited impact to yourself. So uh, here you would have to work with your legal department or maybe procurement already has a process for this, um, but that has to be confirmed with this vendor and it has to be very detailed out. And then another thing here is, um, what is the time frame for the, the, for the vendor to deliver artifacts to the organization? And this is where they may be late on some milestones, which can happen on projects and, and very likely in many cases. And you have to understand what will be the impact of this is will the vendor not charge for a certain percentage of that milestone? Um, you have to find out what specific uh, items will be uh, done here in the event that the vendor misses a milestone. And then the other thing is that you have to know where should the invoices be mailed to. Usually the procurement team in your group will take care of this. They'll handle all of the invoice processing. But maybe if you work in a smaller organization, you definitely want to make sure that they have your correct address and the correct person within your organization are getting these invoices because if that's not defined clearly, it could be a situation where these invoices are going into a black hole. This vendor will sue for the money uh, that's required and you can just get into a lot of trouble. So this is something else you want to be sure that you take care of. And the next section here, what we're going to talk about is the project information generally. Um, you do have here uh, part of this information that will be required is the project background and the scope. Again, this has to be very, very detailed, and it's preferable if this um, particular section is worked on with the vendor so they can confirm their understanding. Um, that would be specified here, so in that way there's no misunderstanding on the project scope. And then the next thing is the project approach. Is it going to be agile? Is it going to be waterfall? A hybrid? Again, this has to be understood on both sides. And then you're going to have the actual project schedule here. And again, as we discussed before, you have to have here performance guarantees by the vendor. And, you know, with the vendor looking at your project plan and guaranteeing and saying, oh, yeah, we'll deliver on that timeline. What guarantees can they provide you on that? You need to get that in writing. Um, because, for example, if you're working on an agile project, um, and their internal velocity of the software developers is not necessarily up to par, how can they guarantee that they're going to execute a certain amount of stories for each sprint? So that's just a, a quick example of that, but you have to get guarantees by the vendor. And again, what will be the process for the missed milestones? This is where it can get more technical and more detailed. And again, your company has to lead this discussion. It can't be the vendor leading this discussion because they'll make this situation more favorable to them. Um, and some of the components here are maybe credits for on, for you in regards to work missed on milestones. And another thing is to have a process in place where invoices are put on hold, where the vendor sends you an invoice, but internally in your organization, you can reach out to your finance group and tell them to put a hold on that invoice until they execute the milestone successfully. Once they execute the milestone successfully and they're done with it, you know, your project team approves of it, now you can unlock that invoice and have your procurement team pay the vendor. And then another thing here is the roles and responsibilities. Um, you want to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. There's no misunderstanding on who's going to be working on what. Especially on the people, especially when it comes to the phases, you want to make sure uh, people are clear on what they're working on in the phase. 
one other thing here if you're using agile you want to define what are the ex expected outcomes for each sprint uh, basically what is the definition of done for each sprint uh, you definitely want to sit down with the vendor, go over this, and then confirm it through the SOW. This has to be uh, clearly stated because this will definitely lead to a lot of misunderstandings, especially if you're working with Agile. Same goes for the waterfall method. Um, you know, you have your phase definitions. What would indicate the end of a phase? And what is the definition of done for each phase? So you really have to make sure of this. And again, you want to have a more detailed project scope here. You may have a section where items that are not in scope. Again, um, that seems pretty obvious, but the thing is, is that that will definitely lead uh, to less misunderstanding there because um, they may be implementing something that you don't want. And you also have to indicate here the vendor responsibilities. It's, a, it's almost like a racy chart, but for the vendor. Next thing here in this section will be the communications plan. Um, now here you want to detail this out with the vendor and it's going to include like the schedule of meetings um, You're going to have your status meetings. You're going to have issue meetings um, You're going to have some one-off special meetings like if situations come up in regard to scope changes um, You may also have meetings where you're troubleshooting. So let's say for example the your technical team for your tech company Inc for your organization they're having issues integrating with the vendor product. The quickest way to resolve this is to have a vendor workshop between the technical teams of your organization as well as PMO Tools Inc., the vendor. Uh, that would be the quickest way to resolve these type of integration issues, but you have to have this defined on the communications plan. Like, when would this, if, will there be a schedule to do this, or if they're one offs? What guarantees can the vendor provide you that those resources will be available to help you troubleshoot? So that has to be defined here. Also, you have to define who will be the participants in the meetings or the workshops. And then over here in the last point, um, it's kind of like what I mentioned before. Um, you have to understand who their technical team is and who's the lead. So in that way, you know, in the, in the event that you have to reach out to them. All of that needs to be defined here. And in regards to reporting, this is not related to the product that's being developed. This is more related to project reporting on the progress of the project. So you're going to have reports created for project status. And then another thing here is what methods uh, or tools will be provided to keep everyone on track of how the project is going. Will it be Microsoft Teams? Will it be Confluence? Um, whatever software package that's being used that has to be defined here. You don't want to just wait for the weekly status report to go out. You want a tool here so that everyone can stay abreast of the project um, as the project goes along. I do that. What I want to do is I, I want to kind of maximize just a little bit so you can get a, a closer look at this. So as part of SOWs or statements of work, you need absolutely critically, you need a schedule as to when the vendor is going to deliver a milestone. Um, the reason for that is on your budget plan, you can estimate when costs are going to be hitting your budget plan as it relates to the vendor. And in order to do that, you're going to need a detailed milestone delivery schedule, which details out the milestone that the vendor is going to deliver to you as well as the associated cost for that milestone. In this way you can go back and you bu you can budget appropriately. Now um, we'll go over first uh, methods for the waterfall and then we can go over an agile method um, because it depends on the project that you're working on. If you're working on a waterfall project or a hybrid project um, also, you can be working on an Agile project with Sprint. So I just wanted to go over the two most common project types here. And again, depending on the organization you work at, uh, the process could be different. So first of all, here in the waterfall section at the top, um, in our case, we're going to have a project kickoff phase where very high level requirements are going to be discussed. 
And we're also going to have the face-to-face -face kickoff conference. Um, in that kickoff conference, our resources from Tech Company Inc., they're going to be traveling overseas to PMO Tools Inc. Uh, to attend the conference. So in our budget plan, we're going to need uh, funds allocated there for the travel. And, um, you know, I'll go over that with you in a future lecture. But at that conference uh, overseas, we're going to be go going over high level requirements and making sure the details of how the project will work out will happen. So all of that will be discussed there. And as you can see here, the due date is May 29th and at the cost of $50,000. So this is kind of like the schedule that you have here. One thing I want to point out, when you look at the due date, this is when the vendor is going to execute the invoice or you will have to generate a receipt in order to have procurement send the payment to the vendor. Now this process I'll go over in detail later when we're managing the budget plan, but the reason why I'm mentioning this is that you have to be observant if the due date falls on a certain fiscal calendar month. So as you see here, for example, May 29th, May 29th is looking like it's going to be in June's fiscal month. Because remember our discussion before uh, in our previous lecture where we were mentioning that fiscal months do not follow the same uh, schedule as a traditional calendar month because many times the end of the calendar month will fall in the middle of the week. And for finance, in many organizations, it doesn't work that way. Finance needs to have a final day on Friday. And in this case, maybe Friday would be May 27th, which would be the close of May's fiscal month. So in this case, May 29th may be part of the June fiscal month. And this $50,000 will need to be budgeted for the month of June and not May. So again, um, you have to check your fiscal calendar. Um, and I'll provide more uh, resources on that in the resources section. Um, I'll provide a sample um, fiscal month calendar and more explanation on that. So you, you can find that in the resources section if it's uh, not clear. So the rest of the waterfall method um, doesn't require it's pretty self-explanatory we have the requirements sign off slated for September 25th and one other thing I wanted to point out here there's a column here for acceptance criteria and this is very critical um, you want a bulleted list here of all the items that need to be delivered as part of this deliverable as well as any expectations um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be artifacts. It could be, see in this case, we have the business requirements document that's approved, but let's say, for example, when you get to the development phase, you want the system in the quality insurance environment. Uh, you may want everything unit tested. All of your expectations as to how the particular item listed in the milestone will be done those expectations have to be listed, listed in the acceptance criteria. This is very important so it doesn't lead to any misunderstanding on anybody's part. Okay, so that's the other item I wanted to point out to you. And again, just making sure that you realize, uh, you know, the due dates may not necessarily fall within a spe uh, specific um, fiscal calendar. If it goes to the next fiscal month, you have to budget for that month not the calendar month okay so that pretty much takes care of the waterfall method um, going here to the agile method this is the milestone and payment schedule for the agile method here it's going to work a little bit differently um, we're going to have our high level requirements conference but instead of requirements we're going to be developing the backlog and also our sprints are going to be defined and we're going to work with the vendor to have a very specific definition of done for each sprint and that's going to have a cost of fifty thousand dollars so here the difference from the waterfall aspect is that now 
in the milestones, you have your sprints. And in our case, we'll have 10 sprints based on the backlog that we'll develop, each at a cost of $25,000. And again, pay careful attention to the due dates because they may fall uh, on a certain fiscal calendar. Um, and within each one of these sprints, again, it's very critical in your acceptance criteria to list out what is the definition of done, like what artifacts or what has to be done so that sprint can be confirmed. Um, and this includes um, uh, sprint reviews. This also includes like sprint planning for the next sprint. You can put that here in the acceptance criteria or over in the milestones um, column, you can kind of have your sprint one as a header and then underneath uh, the sprint, you know, like if you were to click here and then you start entering sub bullets, you can enter sub bullets here as to what exactly is gonna happen in that sprint, that's even better. If you can detail that out, that's, that'll be fantastic because then the, again, there's no misunderstanding. And then here in Sprint 7, just a note, um, it does end in mid-December and you have to be careful of this. Watch the dates because in, it, in this example, this falls around Christmas time. And traditionally in organizations, this is a very slow time of the month. Realistically speaking, uh, you're fully staffed during the first two weeks of December. After that, it's pretty much uh, give or take because everybody goes on Christmas vacation. So we'll make the assumption here that we agreed with the vendor that the next sprint, Sprint 8, won't start up until January 4th of the next year because, um, you know, because of the fact that everybody's going to be on vacation and it's not really, uh, it's, it's not too prudent to plan anything during Christmas time. And if anything, certain organizations, they have production freezes or even the vendor may have a production freeze. So this is one of the things you need to find out and plan for. So just be careful with your dates, um, you know, and when you're reviewing this offline, this is why there's such a huge gap uh, between Sprint 7 and 8. But basically it's the same concept as the waterfall. Um, and then down here, you know, you wanna make sure that you have your production support once your system is developed what are gonna be the steps? You know, you, you have a production rollout, here you have the user training, maybe a wiki or help videos are developed, and you may have a process for defect fixes. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, defect fixes based on the development. So you wanna work all of this out with the vendor and make sure all of this is understood and that the acceptance criteria is defined in this section here. So that does it for the schedule portion of the delivery schedule. Now we have the fixed fee schedule, which is here. And again, this is critical because these are the one-off fees away from the configuration of the software development that your vendor is going to be, uh, you're going to be responsible for. And again, you have to make sure in your budget plan, you have these costs budgeted for, for the specific fiscal month. So uh, some examples here would be like software purchases. This is kind of like um, when you purchase a software, um, maybe you're paying in monthly installments or you're paying for the software upfront, um, you know, maybe $200 a year and you're being billed annually. This is an example of that, of the software purchase. And that differs from the license in that the licensing is, th this is, for the license to use for the software. So you get the software itself and then you you would get the license to use the software. So it depends on the vendor, um, how their software and licensing is structured. So you have that here. Also you have operational support. Um, this is gonna be after the system goes live, you're gonna need operational support. And also here you're gonna have the user licenses. This is, in the event, um, you know, you, you're going to have a bulk of like maybe a hundred users or something. So you're going to have bulk licensing from the vendor um, for the user. So uh, maybe they have a certain price range for a hundred users, a certain price range for 50 users. Again, these are details you need to work out with the organization. But in our case, it's going to be a thousand dollar cost in each of 2022, 2023 and 2024. And these years are post-production. 
and then again you have operational support and what I did here is that I just wanted to sort it out by the order of the calendar year so there's no confusion you know um, you'll it'll match up one to one with the cost plan it'll make it much easier when you have your budget plan in one hand and this schedule in another hand and you're budgeting on your budget plan appropriately to cover these costs so I realize that this is kind of like a mouthful um, regarding the SOW document but this is a very critical document because what this does is that it's going to take you and now you can budget this out on your budget plan and you're you'll be able to start uh, managing your budget